Okay, uh, good, good afternoon everybody. Um, thank you for coming. My name is Mark Walton. I'm going to give a, a little bit of a talk about um, Renesas's um, recent Open ADX activities and I'll, I'll sort of give a quick explanation about what Open ADX is first for those who are not familiar with it. And uh, then basically I'll, I'll show some of the um, trials we have in, in, uh, in sort of implementing this Open ADX on, on Renesas equipment where we basically try and bring some hardware, Renesas hardware, into this sort of simulation environment. Uh, and then I'll give a few sort of um, summaries of, of our conclusions, basically, and sort of what some benchmarks, basically, of um, what our experiences were. So, quick one first is really, I mean, who are we? Who are Renesas? So, I don't know if, if you already know, but Renesas is basically uh, a combination of uh, Hitachi, Mitsubishi, and NEC. So, all the semiconductor parts of those companies were all combined together to make one big semiconductor company, and, and that was, that was Renesas. And uh, basically, there's something like 20,000 employees now. Is that sort of combined company? <clears throat> and we basically cover have a range of microcontrollers, system on chips, analog, power semiconductors. And the focus is sort of is quite a broad range of focus: um, industrial, home electronics, um, and automotive is basically one, one of our sort of strong focal points. And hence, the sort of the interest in this open ADX um, as, as part of that, and uh, headquartered in, in Tokyo, Japan. So, what is Open ADX then? So, so, so the X stands for accelerating, the AD stands for autonomous driving. So, we're basically trying to accelerate the development of autonomous driving. And, and that's basically, so why Eclipse? It, it seems a bit strange, but Eclipse Foundation is basically, it's an Eclipse Foundation project. So, we're sort of running under this Eclipse Foundation. Uh, and the purpose really is to say, is to do this acceleration of the, the tool chain. So, really, we're focusing on the, the tool chain of autonomous driving. And by defining reference architectures, so open interfaces, and, uh, and specifying this autonomous tool chain. <clears throat> yeah, so why, why open ADX? It really all comes down to, uh, to cost and development and the complexity of this whole problem. So to develop all these, uh, these tools um, you know, is a pretty big job, basically. It's, uh, and and there's, uh, not all the companies necessarily would have that desire to want to invest in, in all those different tools to create a complete solution. So, uh, so by basically having Open ADX, we can perhaps share that cost and, and all benefit from each other and uh, really accelerate this whole development. So these consortiums, partnerships are really, really the way to sort of reduce this cost of entry. And um, you know, specialist companies, they can focus on their specialist skills. So be it simulators or, or, or tool chains or, you know, so yeah, so really this collaboration, it sort of makes sense for all the companies involved to, to really try to share the cost and accelerate the, this development. <clears throat> so how will OpenADX accelerate this development? So, so the really the approach is that we'll, we'll create this seamless integration of the tools in the tool chain. So, so a little diagram there just shows these sort of very stages that we would go through basically in developing this autonomous driving. So from sort of architecture, uh, definition, there's this sort of deep learning where you train all your, your algorithms um, and integrate them. And, and each of these steps basically needs a certain set of tools. And also the, the, the data basically will probably be um, you know, similar. Maybe you're processing images. So each of these steps, you might want to process these sort of images or streams of images. So the, really, we're trying to make that seamless, those steps in integration to try to accelerate the whole thing. And if we agree common ways, we can sort of share that material and, and, and accelerate it all. So we're trying to integrate these tools for each of these stages between different vendors as well. So really it's, it's seamless across the sort of steps and also between vendors and suppliers. <clears throat> and another part of this acceleration is really by open source. So we, we want basically to create any open source um, software and sort of share this within this sort of ecosystem. So it's really about removing the barriers to uh, share this development across uh, multiple vendors and stakeholders to accelerate this, sort of this autonomous driving vision. So how are we gonna focus this work? So um, Basically, that we've, OpenADX has defined this concept of a test bed. So a test bed is, is really a, an agreed use case that we can sort of focus on the collaboration and generate some sort of concrete output that, and basically ideally produce something demonstrable so you can see something you know, real. Um, and so there's, there's two um, sort of test bed activities. There's this simulation test bed, basically, which is the bit we're mostly interested in for this presentation. And then there's the uh, 
there's basically this uh, massive data ingest and management test bed. So this is really all about the fact that if you think on an autonomous car, you might have eight cameras, you might have LiDAR, and it's streaming all those images, uh, you know, 15, 30 frames a second. That's a lot of data, and you have to pretty much collect that and manage that as part of your testing. So really, the, that second part is about how do you manage that and share it, and, but that's not so much of interest for this presentation for myself. <clears throat> yeah, so this, this simulation test bed is basically to try to interconnect the different companies' components. They've defined a, a sort of like an open standard, and then the open standard then will allow you to plug and play different suppliers' tools. And it should allow basically local or remote connection of the various components in a simulation. Right. Okay, so what is the communication of the, all these different nodes? So this, this DDS, I don't know when anyone's come across this, this is uh, basically it's open, it's sort of open um, where oh, a data distribution service. And it's really about um, this OMG group, object management group, has basically defined a standard and there's various companies implement this standard, but it allows you to share data sort of real time between different nodes. You arrange to be a, a publisher on one node and you might say, I have this topic, the topic might be a camera image, and then another node might be a subscriber, and then they'd say, well, actually, I want to subscribe to your, your camera image. And then, then the DDS would then take care of that transfer, basically, between the two nodes. So it's a very easy way to plug together different, different nodes and, and then share information between them, and that information can be pretty much anything. But in this case, we're going to use ROS2, so this robotic operating system 2, and it defines a whole load of, sort of ready-made messages for, you know, for sensors, um, applications like cameras or stereoscopic compressed images, um, control of steering, whatever you'd imagine, ROS2 has got it. So effectively, we end up with this combination. It's ROS2 on top of DDS. And that's what we're using is this sort of open source communication between the nodes in this sort of simulation environment. Right, and so one of um, uh, DDS vendors, there's a couple of, there's a few DDS vendors. The first is FastR TPS is one, Open Splice. So the ROS2, if you, do, you can download this, it's sort of all available. You download it, you'll find that FastR TPS and Open Splice are sort of ready supported. So you just pretty much on your PC, you can install this lot and away you go. Uh, yeah, but actually, you know, the, the, the transport layer that DDS uses, it's um, sort of by default is I, IP connection, but you can actually sort of write your own. You can pretty much plug in your own. And you, you could have shared memory for sort of local nodes to make it more efficient or whatever you can imagine, really. But in this case, we're using this sort of a UDP IP. <clears throat> so a quick example of that, to try and put this sort of in, in context. So on the left side there, there's a, there's a sort of simulator server. So this might be a driving simulator in this, in this example. And then and above that, we have sort of one DDS node, this sort of image sensor server or, or publisher. So, so that's one of the nodes. And it, underneath it on the right there, you've got this, this stack. So there's the, there's the RCL, this sort of ROS2 client library, and there's the ROS middleware, which is basically, the, the, so because the DDS can come in different flavors, the ROS middleware is like an adapter to, to, to create a sort of standard interface for the ROS on top of different manufacturers' implementations. So the DDS standard is sort of defined at the, the sort of transport layer, not at the sort of the the control API. So yeah, the ROS middleware is like, it's like an adapter for that. So there are different versions of that for different DDS implementations. But overall, it then becomes um, interoperable. The DDSs will talk to each other from different manufacturers, but this ROS middleware sort of takes care of this adaption. <clears throat> and in this case, then, there's a transport UDP IP. So, and that, so, th th so this yeah, image sensor server then is connected via the Ethernet to this on the right side. We've got another sort of DDS node, it's another application. This is our computer vision application in this case. And it, and it's, so it's gonna, so it, it can be a subscriber and even a publisher. You can create, so you can choose, you can mix and match. So in this case, we, we start off by, we say we subscribe to images. So, so having subscribed to images, in, in the, the, D, the DDS then basically will, will, will use these multicasts and, and so they sort of each know of each other's existence and, and what they're interested in. So in this case, the publisher would then start to stream the images across, to the, across the Ethernet to the, to the DDS on the, uh, the computer vision application. So that application then gets these images passed to it. And then it will run some sort of a, some image processing and then maybe then on the right side you've got these detection results. So it might, the image processing might be detect pedestrians. So then the object list it publishes would be maybe a list of where the pedestrians are located in the image that it received. So then somebody else then, some of this, this uh, maybe on the right there's this remote DDS nodes. It could then basically uh, pass those object lists to some other entity, some other node that's interested. So that, that's sort of a rough idea of this, how this DDS, this ROS2 DDS connects together. And that's pretty much the heart of this sort of simulation test bed. And, and whatever component you implement, if you put this sort of adapter on there, then you can connect them together and share information in the simulation environment. So, so, okay. so, 
So, so the key thing we had on the left there was this uh, simulator. So really you need something that's going to simulate driving environments. Um, and it's going to also basically provide you all the sensor measurements that you'd expect from a real car. It's got to simulate all those things. So uh, really this is sort of one of the heart of, of this sort of test bed. And, uh, we, and it allows this sort of testing of either this, there's this term ADAS, which is, which is what we have today really. If you look in the cars, we have this advanced driver assistance system, so like lane following or um, collision avoidance, that's sort of what they call ADAS. Or it can also be used for what they call the AD systems, autonomous driving. That's what we're sort of heading towards, these really sort of sophisticated systems of self-driving. And there's, there's, there's actually quite a few solutions out there. So there's, a, there's the AirSim. So again, that, that's something you can just download. That's a Microsoft one. Um, and it started off, originally it was for drone, drone developments, but they they've support cars now as well. And there's like four or five versions you download for different environments. And you can have a play with that. You just use a keyboard to steer a car around this virtual world. Another one is Carla. Which, and so that picture below is actually taken from Carla. So Carla is, is um, again, it's, it's funded by a number of companies and it's sort of open, so you can just download it and use it. And then it provides um, sort of APIs, so you can actually read images from sensors, you can configure sensors. Yeah, Deep Drive, Udacity, TSYS, you know, there's, there's quite a few out there. So some of these, I guess, you have to pay for, other ones are for free and you can just have to try yourself. Right, so that's the sort of, and you see in this image, you can pretty much imagine, um, yeah, anything you can imagine, basically, you can put in there. We've got cyclists, various cars, road signs. It's just down to your imagination as to what sort of environment you create. By default, there's, um, Carla's got two environments. One's sort of like an, a, a downtown, the other one is a sort of more rural area. And you can sort of control maybe how many cars are in there or how many pedestrians, and they sort of wander around the environment. And then you have this sort of, this, this sort of car, the, the actor car, that you basically would control as part of your autonomous driving testing. <clears throat> okay, so what else could you do with these simulators? So another thing to do is you, you don't have to have just one camera. You can have two cameras or, or eight cameras, whatever you like. So if this is a little snapshot showing stereoscopic. So if you look closely, you can sort of see that pedestrian is, is off to one side in one image and off to the other side. So this is actually stereoscopic images. So then that's pretty useful for, you know, for certain algorithms. You can feed that in and you can get depth of field and whatever. But the other thing, if you look closely, is you've got rain there. So you can actually, they've got environmental modeling going on as well. So you can then test to see how your algorithms perform in rain or when it's um, overcast or dark. So, so it's very powerful, really. And if you think about it, normally you'd be testing, you need lots of photographs. You need to go around and, and create some sort of sequence of images to use or really, really do road testing, and that can be expensive, but with a simulator, you can effectively replace all that and you know, provide reproducible test cases, perhaps very cheaply. So, so they've got some benefit. Nice. Okay, so where does Renesas fit into this? So basically, um, Renesas has like the RCAR uh, family, and um, we're basically providing these systems on chips, and they're aimed at these ADAS and AD systems. And today there, there, are, there will be cars out there with this ADAS um, chips in there already. Um, and this, so, so there's different families. So, so there's this V device family, sort of vision processing family, uh, such as it, we have this V3M, so V vision, uh, third generation, and M is like middle tier, and then there's a H is the higher tier. Um, and uh, basically these do vision processing, so they have IP in there specific to vision processing. They can connect direct to cameras, four or eight or, or whatever. You know, and then, and that's basically what we're interested in using to try and hook these things in there. So yeah, as part of this vision processing, you need ways to really um, test this stuff, test the IP that's in there, and it has to be reproducible. And the sort of IP we've got in there, things like this uh, CNN, Convolutional Neural Network, sort of, uh, or, or shader IP, these sort of graphic processor accelerators. So these chips have this sort of IP in there for handling these images. So yeah, those simulators basically then can provide pretty useful uh, source of data for testing this sort of IP. And the idea is that OpenADX would then allow you to connect these simulators and IP together very easily. You can swap, swap them around. So, so for us, really, this is a really positive, positive thing. And then we can also do sort of even use this in continuous, continuous integration you know, in, in your test systems. And it's, uh, it's, it's very powerful. It's, it's, for us, it's a very interesting way, way forward. Right, so the demo gets, gets to the, the heart of it all, really. So what we've done is we've basically um, we've focused on this computer vision application. For us, that's interesting. You can, you know, you can get pictures out of these simulators. And we...
Sorry about that. So, yes. Presenter error number one. <laughs> right. So yeah, we're using this R car basically um, as at the heart of this demo. Um, and we've basically got, um, we're hooking into this simulation test bed, which is sort of this main activity that OpenADX is, is doing. Uh, and so yeah, so we've got two ways we could do this. One is we can actually use the real board, this R car uh, V3 and development board, which we've got. But additionally, we, we've got a simulator, so we can actually run the simulator inside our debug tools, and we can even hook that into this sort of ROS2 DDS framework running on the same PC. So then you can get even deeper into your algorithms debugging. So you've got, to, and we've, we've sort of tried both ways. But the goal really is to demonstrate this Renis technology connecting into this OpenADX framework, and that's really where we're heading. Right. So little block diagram, basically. So what? Have, so this is what you've got set up. I don't know if anyone's seen the stand we have, but we've, we've got this sort of set up on the stand. So on the left side, we've got the simulator, and basically that has got a, a camera, camera image server over the sort of ROS2 DDS. So the images are streaming off here onto the, this target simulator or hardware, and uh, basically there's a Linux running on there with, again, the ROS2 DDS software installed. Uh, and then, then this Linux application, so it takes, takes these streams of images and runs them through sort of the computer vision um, algorithms that's on the chip, and then we're basically running it as a sort of open loop demo. So the output of this computer vision is then just output over this um, HDMI to the, to the right side, this, this screen here. So we see the screen here that shows the sort of the, 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 this, the, the demo, what it's actually done. In, in, in a real system, you'd probably have this dotted line, would be some sort of control loop to feedback object detection, but say for the demo, we've sort of not, not, not done that. To make it interesting, we've also we've in integrated a steering wheel, so you can actually drive the, the, the car that's in the simulation environment, you can actually sort of take control and drive it. Not in an autonomous way, just in a way to you know, sort of have some fun, as it were. So yeah, and there's the board there underneath this, this little, that's a picture of the board we're sort of using there, this um, R car hardware. Okay, so yeah, that's using Carla, basically. And then Carla sits on this Unreal Engine. So a lot of these simulators are using this Unreal Engine for the rendering. Okay, right, I've got a, a little video here now just to sort of uh, to illustrate really what, what's going on in the demo. So we're sort of so, yeah, driving the, um, the, the, yeah. the, the steering wheel and the pedals, and then that's basically controlling the simulator, which is the screen sort of in the, the middle. That, that's the screen of the, uh, the simulator output. And then that is basically streamed across to this board, so there's an Ethernet connection. So the ROS2 DDS streams the images across the board. The board then does, displays that top screen, which shows sort of the, the, the images that are being received over ROS2 DDS, and also this sort of processing that's going on underneath. So really, this and this this is sort of demonstrating this whole whole connectivity, this open ADX concept of plugging together different pieces in a simple way, which is with two nodes, two ROS2 DDS nodes. But it shows we can get this this hardware is basically running inside the simulation loop. Right. Okay. And another little video. This, this basically um, this is actually then sort of focusing on the output of the uh, the this R car board what's in there. So, so the bottom bit, what we've got is we have a, um, a toolkit release for developing neural networks on the, on the Renaissance technology. And uh, this toolkit has in it some, um, some basically demo of, of ground detection. So, so this is based, the white is, is where basically the ground detection is telling you the ground is based on this simulated input. So here you can see the weather patterns. I'm flipping the weather patterns a bit. So <clears throat> the neural network, it, it's it was trained on a very basic set of data. It's, it's, it works well on the default environment, but not so well on the other environments. It's just the demo. But it shows you, you know, the sort of the, um, the, this simulation tool really lets you play with different environments, and you can pretty much do whatever you can imagine when, you, when you're driving this. So, yeah, and we have some stats on the left, so we're doing sort of 15 frames a second is sort of the rate we're running this thing at. Okay. Right, so, so we, I showed before some stereoscopic images. So we have some other IP as well we've, we've been developing. So I thought this might be interesting just to show you. We, we actually took some stereoscopic images from one of the simulators to show what we can do here. So what we have here, it's color-coded. So it's basically used these stereo images to work out the, the depth of the objects. So red, so it's, it's rainbow color. So red is the is closest. Then you've got sort of orange, yellow, green as you go further, further back away from the car. So I can actually just quickly run this as well, a little video for this. So this basically was a stream of images for, from the simulator, stereoscopic, converted into depths. So you can see the lamppost as it comes closer, it sort of changes in color to, you know, to red as being the closest image. So this sort of thing would be one of some of the IP that you might get in some of these cars, you know, automotive cars for autonomous driving, to try and work out objects and the, the, the depth of these objects in your image. 
But then again, that's all done with the simulator. So then you can try different weather patterns, you know, see really how well it works, you know, your algorithms in the, in the different conditions. This is a default environment, so I've kept it nice and simple for this. And then there's another one I have. So, so th this little video is basically um, processing a sequence of images. So obviously the delta between the images will give you the speed of an object. So, so th this is actually then using, again, the color coding shows you. So the color shows you the direction. So if, if it's yellow, it's sort of going left past you. If it's sort of purple, it's sort of going right past you. Green is sort of past you, but to the left. And so the, the, the rainbow colors sort of wrap around in a circle. And then the intensity of the color reflects the speed. So basically, if I run the demo of the, the video, so obviously as the objects get closer to your left side, the, the relative speed is sort of faster past you, so they get stronger yellow colour. So, and you can see the cars coming, so they're sort of slightly orange, yellow, darker colour before the ground level, because they're sort of moving in a bit quicker. So again, and then this sequence of images is just a, basically shows you each previous pair of images. So this sort of thing, again, is very good for, you know, you can detect your objects from this and you can work out what speed and if they're coming towards you. So this is just from a sequence of images taken from one of these simulators. It shows you the power of this for, for, the, for the IP testing, really. So this is a bit of a spin-off. We, we didn't really plan to do this originally, but we just suddenly realized it's actually quite a useful way of generating test data. Right, so yeah, OpenADX. So it's all about swapping bits around. So, so what we did here was we swapped some of the bits around. So we swapped around. So this, this image, this is an air sim, so a Microsoft air sim image. So we, we swapped that in instead of using um, the car like we've shown you before. We just literally just created an adapter, ROS2 GDS adapter that plugged on the ASIM and away you go, we then streamed out the ASIM images. And, and then instead of having the, the R car, the, the board, the, the, we actually um, fed this to a simulator. So, so the little white frame, it, it, that's basically um, an image that's looped back from our shader sort of GPU simulator and it just added a white frame to the image and then looped it back to display on. So this is all running on the same PC. Um, so it just shows you, and that was very easy to do, just swap between these different components, which sort of uh, was, was, yeah, proved the sort of power of OpenADX when this ROS2 DDS. Right now, as you can, next set of interfaces. Okay, so I guess a few numbers now. So, so what are we doing on this? So yeah, we achieved 15 frames a second, basically, in this demo. Um, it wasn't straightforward. We had to sort of you know, work a little bit at that. So the image size is fairly small, half a megapixel. That related really to the CNN we had, and it was this size, so we had to sort of copy that size, but also we had to compress these images to get them across the ROS2 DDS interface without too much latency. And we used a bit of pipelining as well, so there's a little bit of overlap going on in, in, in the processing to sort of stream these images um, sort of real time. And then these, these, um, these simulator camera sensors, if you think about it, as well as rendering the, the simulation screen, you've got a, every camera you add into the simulation environment, you need to render that as well, and that's quite a big overhead. So these sort of laptops are struggling a little bit to render too many images at real time. So yeah, as an example here, the Carla, we, I'm using this PC Carla, so 0.8.4. So the, 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 these, these show the frame rates you achieve. So screen only, was sort of 66 frames a second on a, the best case, really. Then if you stick in a couple of sensors, camera sensors in there, just maybe stereoscopic half a megapixel, you're down to 15 frames a second because of all this, I guess this PC can only do so much rendering. And then if you go to sort of two times two megapixels, then you're down to sort of seven frames a second. So really, you need to think about how you can scale these simulators up. For us, we didn't really look into that, but it's one of the issues with autonomous driving. And then we did air sim as well. Air sim, a little bit slower, so even 0.3 megapixel, 15 frames a second. So I think, yeah, the other thing is the simulator, really slow. The hardware is pretty quick, which is maybe what you'd expect. So if Right, then, then, then um, this is some latency. So basically, if you look at this, uh, the, in the middle there, there's this half a megapixel. So it's one and a half megabytes of data, the loopback, 80 milliseconds. So it's really 40 milliseconds to send across a raw image across DDS. This is something like three, 400 megabits a second. So it's a reasonably fast link, but there's a lot of data. So by compressing it, we've got the arrow on the left there. We're down to sort of, you know, 10 milliseconds or maybe loopback times so or four or five milliseconds. If you imagine a one megapixel on the right here, yeah, you're, you're up at three megabytes and it's sort of, you know, it's, it's sort of like 70, 80 milliseconds. It's pretty bad latency. So the compression really was pretty beneficial to us in terms of getting things across this DDS link. Even this is gigabit Ethernet, one gigabit Ethernet. It's, it sort of struggles with these, these camera images. DDS, this, this is this roster DDS. It's supposed to be plug and play. You just plug, plug nodes in and they discover each other. But really, if you've got firewalls, it's a real headache because it's multicast and these things get blocked by routers and switches and 
it, uh, yeah, and also uh, functional DTS doesn't guarantee good throughput. We have to do quite a bit of work to get this working, these DDS. But once that's working, brilliant. You know, it's, it's very easy to add new, new sort of nodes, but getting it working was a little challenge. So yeah, as a summary, um, really, we, for this sort of AD, this um, autonomous driving, you want to accelerate things to run faster in real time. That's where you want to go to just speed up the mileage you can cover to test. For us, that was quite a challenge um, to achieve that really on the, on this laptop, and you, you need some sort of scalable simulators and uh, scalable compute platforms really to, to, to let us get there. Because if you think about autonomous autonomous driving, you more you're heading towards more cameras really. So this example here might show you an ADAS system setup or AAD, so you've got a car in the middle there with eight sensors. So you're literally trying to, and then on the right here, you, this is what you might do. You might morph this into sort of a 3D surround image, but really this eight images, that's a lot of cameras, a lot of sensors, a lot of rendering in the simulation environment. So yeah, really as a conclusion, I think I've sort of, this is good, this Open ADX, it's working really well for us. You know, we, we like it. Um, you can plug and play these components. Um, you can test your IP in, a, in nice, easy ways. Um, so really, we were very keen to sort of work in this as Rennes SAS. Um, but yeah, getting these good image rates from the simulators, certainly for us, it, it looked like that needs to be scalable in some way. And um, maybe compression can help things in the relaying rates. But really, the higher the frame rate, the better in terms of accelerating your testing. And, uh, but, but overall, Rennes SAS basically really keen to, to work on this scalable solution to try, try and see where we go with all this and, and head towards this AD. Okay, right. So, yes, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Straight after lunch, it's a diff difficult time. <laughs> Plus one, me, please, if, uh, <laughs> if, it, if it was enough to keep you awake, that's good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Any questions? Yes, so yes, for sure. So in the in the in the Carla one, you can basically define the step size. So you choose, you know, I want a 10 millisecond step or a 20 millisecond step. The question is how fast you process. So if you're setting a 20 a 20 millisecond step size in the simulation, if you can process that in in 10 milliseconds, then you can accelerate your time. But if you process it in 20 milliseconds, your 20 millisecond step size, then you really that's just real time. Does that make sense? Or yeah, so you can choose, or you can basically run maybe 100 millisecond step sizes. Then you can sort of then effectively what you're seeing is you're seeing bigger jumps in the images. You can sort of that can help accelerate your testing. But really, if you need sort of 15 frames a second or 30 frames a second for these camera sensors to get reasonable resolution, you know that that's yeah you you need to be running at these sort of frame rates in your simulator. But it comes down to processing power. If you have the processing power, then yep, you can accelerate it and you can control that. Yeah. Any any other questions? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. That's, uh